The next time you eat a salad, look closely at its content. Did you know that most of the items you're eating are plant organs? Hi, and welcome back. In today's biology segment, I will talk about roots, stems, and leaves. Roots, stems, and leaves. Roots. Roots are plant organs that anchor a plant, usually absorb water and dissolve minerals, and contain vascular tissues that transport materials to and from the stem. The type of root system is genetically determined but can vary because of environmental factors such as soil type, moisture, and temperature. There are two main types of root systems tap roots and fibrous roots. Carrots and beets are tap roots, which are single, thick structures with a smaller branching roots. Tap roots accumulate and store food. Fibrous root systems have many small branching roots that grow from a central point. Some plants such as the corn have a type of root called prop roots, which originate above ground and help support a plant. Many climbing plants have aerial roots that cling to objects such as walls and provide support for climbing stems. When bald cypress trees grow in swampy soils, they produce modified roots called pneumatophores, which are referred to as knees. The knees grow upward from the mud and eventually out of the water. Knees help supply oxygen to the roots. And here you can see the structure of a root. Water and dissolved minerals move into the root along two pathways. Dissolved minerals in water enter the root hairs and travel through and between the cells of the cortex. Minerals dissolved in water can flow between the parenchyma cells directly into the root cortex, then through the cells of the endodermis. Root growth. There are two areas of rapidly dividing cells in roots, where the production of new cells initiates growth. The root apical meristem produces cells that cause a root to increase in length. You can see it here in this figure. As these cells begin to mature, they differentiate into different types of cells. In the cuts, the vascular cambium develops between the xylem and phloem and contributes to a root's growth by adding cells that increase its diameter. Each layer of new cells produced by the root apical meristem is left farther behind as new cells are added and the root grows forward through the soil. The tip of each root is covered by a protective layer of parenchyma cells called the root cap. As the root grows through the soil, the cells of the root cap wear away. Replacement cells are produced by the root apical meristem, so the root tip is never without its protective covering. Stems Stems usually are the above-ground parts of plants that support leaves and flowers. They have vascular tissues that transport water, dissolve miner uh, minerals, and sugars to and from roots and leaves. Their form ranges from the thin, herbaceous stems of basil plants to the massive woody trunks of trees. Green, herbaceous stems are soft and flexible and usually carry out some photosynthesis. Petunias, impatiens, and carnations are other examples of plants with herbaceous stems. Trees, shrubs, and some other perennials have woody stems. Woody stems are hard and rigid and have cork and vascular cambriums. Stems that act as food storage organs include corms, tubers, and rhizomes. Corm is a short, thickened underground stem surrounded by leaf scales. A tuber is a swollen underground stem that has buds from which new plants can grow. Rhizomes also are underground stems that store food. Internal structure Stems have a bundle arrangement of circular arrangement of vascular tissues within a surrounding mass of parenchyma tissue. In most decades, xylem and phloem are in a circle of vascular bundles that form a ring in the cortex. 
The vascular bundles of most monocots are scattered throughout the stem. And here this photograph shows that difference. The vascular bundles in a monocot are scattered throughout the stem as seen in this cross section. As seen in this cross section, John Herbaceous Dicot stem have separate bundles of xylem and phloem that form in a ring, so they are more organized. In older stems, the vascular tissues form a continuous cylinder. Woody stems. Many conifers and perennial decots produce thick, sturdy stems that may last several years or even decades. As the stems of woody plants grow in hay, they also grow in thickness. This added thickness, called secondary growth, results from cell divisions in the vascular cambium of the stem. The xylem tissue produced by secondary growth is also called wood. In temperate regions, a tree's annual growth rings are the layers of vascular tissue produced each year by secondary growth. These annual growth rings can be used to estimate the age of the plant. The vascular tissues often contain sclerenchyma fibers that provide support for the growing plant. As secondary growth continues, the outer portion of a woody stem develops bark. Bark is a composed of phloem cells and the core cambium. Bark is a tough, corky tissue that protects the stem from damage by burrowing insects and browsing herbivores. Leaves The primary function of the leaves is photosynthesis. Most leaves have a relatively large surface area that receives sunlight. Sunlight passes through the transparent cuticle and epidermis into photosynthetic tissues just beneath the leaf surface. Leaves vary in their shape and arrangement on the stem. A simple leaf is one with a blade that is not divided. When the blade is divided into leaflets, it is called a compound leaf. Leaf structure. Just beneath the epidermal layer are two layers of mesophyll. Mesophyll is a photosynthetic tissue of a leaf. It is usually made up of two types of parenchyma cells. Palisite mesophyll is the one that you can see in this part of the illustration and spongy mesophyll, that is this part right here. The palisite mesophyll is made up of column-shaped cells containing many chloroplasts. These cells are found just under the upper epidermis and receive maximum exposure to sunlight. Most photosynthesis takes place in the palisite mesophyll. Leaf modifications. Many plants have leaves with structural adaptations for functions besides photosynthesis. Cactus spines, like this one, are modified leaves that help reduce water loss from the plant and provide protection from predators. Carnivorous plants, like the pitcher plant, or this in the picture, have leaves with adaptations that can trap insects or other small animals. And the leaves of aloe vera, the one shown here, store water. This adaptation ensures the long-term survival of the plant when water resources are scarce. I hope you found this video useful, thanks for watching and until the next one, bye!